I am burdened for others, specifically marginalized people of color, and primarily because I grew up in such. Amidst poverty, little resources, but worst of all, little hope. I suffered deprivation without knowing it, only to eventually discover that I was losing in the race of opportunity before I even ever got started. Unfortunately, as I speak today, marginalization is arguably no less today than it ever was. I am confused. A preacher's kid, I grew up the youngest of six boys with a younger sister. I went to school with other children whom were all black and poor, just like me, while the more prosperous white children across the street were educated in a better facility that was exclusively for those of Caucasian descent. Yes, their homes, their cars, their churches, their jobs were all superior to ours. Like the television shows I watched, Leave It to Beaver, My Three Sons, The Brady Bunch, life was just better for them. I was confused. During those same years, I witnessed some of the most tragic events in American history committed by other Americans, I think, from the eyes of a small child. The first occurred when I was just four years old. I came home from kindergarten to find my mother and aunt watching television, viewing the breathtaking aftermath of the assassination of the President of these United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, while my mother and aunt and others who looked like me were hurting, the television depicted a direct dichotomy as some people in the South of a different hue than ours were celebrating this horrific tragedy. I was confused. The second event occurred some four plus years later. Again, I came home from school to see my mom crying. This time, a black man was the victim of incomprehensible hate, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He had just been assassinated. I did not know who he was at the time, but I could tell that he must have been somebody pretty important. The television images and the footages are indelibly etched in my mind as I recall the contradicting reactions from people all over this country. Black people were crying, rioting, and just outright distraught. On the other hand, there again were some white people waving these odd flags I had seen in Civil War movies, parading and celebrating in the days that followed and the tremendous upheaval around the country, the picture became just a little clearer. Any and everybody that looked like me was horrified, helpless, and hopeless, while well, white people had responses ranging from genuine concern to extreme exuberance. I was confused. As time went by, and I became more news aware. I ascertained why these men were killed. They spoke and dreamed about justice for all. They said that every American had the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that just made sense to me, a little boy. And I couldn't comprehend why any fellow 
countrymen would kill another for advocating civility and justice. I was confused. Fast forwarding some 40 plus years, my fate has been in a career in public education, the vast majority as a principal. As I've served in our schools, I have seen many children grow up just like me, not because it was the law, but rather because of systemic issues in our schools and society. Many children of color are still segregated with much less chance of achieving the American dream than others. How is this, you ask, in 2017? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Today, in too many communities, black children are living below the poverty line. Today, in too many cases, children of color are still being suspended from our schools at a disproportionate rate than their non-black peers. Today, in too many cases, children of color with the greatest needs are still in school with the less re least resources. Today, in too many schools, children of color have very few people who look like them in positions of authority and influence. Today, in too many cases, children of color are in a pipeline to prison. Today, in too many cases, children of color are still failing and being failed. I am confused. As a principal, 13 years ago, I inherited a school with a predominantly black and poor student population, replete with the aforementioned characteristics. It could have been characterized as a sinking ship with consistently low test scores, lots of suspensions, retentions, and other negative indicators. The school is now sailing the uncharted waters of hope and opportunity for all children, red or yellow, black or white, they're all precious in his sight, with some of the best test scores and absolutely the fewest suspensions you will find anywhere, one in the last two years. Why? Because we cared. Why? Because we did not assume the worst about them. Why? Because their, of their complexions and their economic status didn't matter to us, and we sought to make a difference in their lives. I am confused. Finally, today, why are so many of our schools still segregated? Today, why are the least still getting the least in our schools? Today, why are so many other schools consistently failing our children of color? Today, why don't enough people care enough to change things for our children of color? Today, why are there so few schools like Two Lakes? Today, why do I have to ask why? I am confused. What about 